Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Test Automation Engineer Certification, where we are in Chapter 6 right now talking about test automation reporting and matrices. As a part of this, we are talking about 6.1 and covering the final segment of it, that is 6.1.3, explain how a test progress report is constructed and published. In this particular tutorial, we'll be understanding how we build a test progress report for the test automation solution and publish it to the rest of the audience. To understand this particular concept, we need to understand that how significant it would be for our stakeholders to understand the report as well. Remember one thing, the testing data is not limited to testing team. There are several stakeholders who might be waiting for our results in order to make perfect decisions about the project. So we always try to keep our information and progress up to date and transparent to other stakeholders. But parallelly, it is very important for us to understand that how crucial it would be to reflect the results in a way that the other stakeholders can understand. It is not necessary my stakeholders only include technical background people. Sometimes we may have management, leaderships, or even people from the customer side who might be interested in these results, but may not have technical understanding of it. So converting this technical raw data into a presentable information plays a very vital role as third step. So let's look into this, that how exactly we can create or construct a test result report and publish it. So the very first thing we are talking about here is then a quick introduction. That is the test logs give detailed information about the test steps, action to take, and expected responses of a test case and or the test suite, whatever you have executed. However, the test logs alone cannot provide a good overview of the overall test results. For this, it is necessary to have test reporting functionality. After the execution of a test suite, a concise test report must be created and published. A report generator can be used for this particular purpose. So in very simple and very outlined way, it is very important for us to understand that if I have executed 10 test cases in a particular execution, Giving the details of each test execution does not make any kind of understanding to any particular stakeholder. Indeed, it should be summarized and should be reflected in a way that helps you to understand what was the overall outcome of this entire test execution. Did we result into some benefits by finding defects or was this successfully completed and we have achieved an increment in the required coverage? And thus, we may have dedicated tools to perform this job. Of course, doing this manually could be hectic, so we prefer having tools which can perform these activities as log generators and can be used in a reflected way that can be understood by people. So let's get into a deep dive of this and try understanding more details that what it takes to build this report. Of course, the very first thing is what are the content of the test progress report? So first of all, we can relate this information uh, to our foundation. In foundation level, we have already covered the information to be included in the test progress report. But when it comes to tasks, it pretty much includes those information and the other task related information with respect to SUT to be included in such progress report as well. To add here, the test progress report must contain the test results, SUT information and documentation of the test environment in which the tests were run in a formal appropriate or for each of the in a format appropriate for each of the stakeholder. Remember one thing. The format of the report is completely determined by the audience. You need to understand your stakeholders of the report and try understanding what could be their need because the report may vary depending on the type of audience. For example, for a team, I can even use a verbal communication like status update call and they can get updated with my current execution process or my status update. Same way if I'm doing it for my managers, I may have different reports to be included in there. And same way if I'm making it for the leadership, I may have different matrices to be included in the report because they might be more interested in the progress made so far rather than the concrete details like my managers. So yes, the formality and format that is template of a report is well defined by your stakeholders. So have a discussion with them, get a clarity and have a definition to it that what exactly is the format of the report. Also to add here, uh, it is necessary to know which tests have failed and the reason for the failure to make troubleshooting easier, it is important to know the test execution history and who reported it. 
Also to add, the person responsible needs to investigate the cause of the failure, report the defect related to it, follow up on the on the defect or the fix to the defect and test that the fix has been correctly implemented. Test reporting is also used to diagnose any failure of the TAF components. So in simple word, as and when a defect is reported, it is very important for us to get it track, get it resolved and conduct the repeated testings, which might be very much helpful for us to define the required uh, amount of retesting and regression testing to be conducted. Indeed, uh, it is the responsibility of the tester with their details on the defect report that they track the defects and get it resolved. So it's not that we only reflect the status on the reports to be about the SUT, about the executions, about the tests. We also talk about the defects as a metric to be included. So all we wanted to convey from this passage is that the defect report and defect statistics, like the number of defects identified, number of defects reported, number of defects open, number of defects at blocker, and which are the priority, which are the low priority, etc., to be reflected in the report as well, to be considered as a content. So I hope that makes it clear that what are the content to be included in the test report. Further to add here, the next thing we have is, of course, discussion on how do we publish the reports. Of course, there could be several ways of doing it. The test report should be published to all the relevant stakeholders, first of all. It can be uploaded on a website, in the cloud, or on the premises, sent to a mailing list, or uploaded to another tool, such as a test management tool. So first of all, get the list of your stakeholders of the report, because we need to notify them. And second, find out a convenient way what you're using in the organization. And the considered ways are basically having a dashboard or talking about mailing them offline or putting it into a test management tool, which would make very common sense at the same time being shared without being having the hard work to be done. Further to add here, this helps ensure that the reports will be reviewed and analyzed if individuals are subscribed to receive them by email or uh, through chat messages posted by the chatbot. So there are multiple other options, which you can certainly look forward to have in your list of sharing these reports with the others. You can put this on the chat, or you can also ask them to subscribe to a particular dashboard so that they can receive it in their email box as an automated email. And finally, to talk about an option is to identify problematic parts of the SUT and keep history of the test report so that statistics about the test cases or test suites with frequent regression can be gathered for the trend analysis. We must always find a way that this publishing method continues to retain the existing information with that of the new report. So say for example, if I'm publishing weekly reports, I must have a facility in my publishing option that I can retain the information about the past few weeks. Now this helps me to quickly compare the data for the past few weeks to quickly check a trend in the progress made or trend in any kind of statistics related to coverage, the risk, or even other achievements. However, I'm talking a little functional right now, but the information will be more about the tasks and SUT when we are talking about the automation. Let's move on to the next part. The next part we have is, of course, to discuss on who are your stakeholders to report in order to include them. So in simple words, we are talking about get the list of the stakeholders to be reported. But again, uh, if you look at the list that is very straightforward, like management stakeholder, operational stakeholder, and technical stakeholder, at this point of time, we would like to say this is just not the comprehensive list. Depending on your organization structure and your type of project and other characteristics, you may have different stakeholders as well. So find out your comprehensive list of stakeholders before you start distributing the reports to them. So let's deep dive into this. Of course, when we talk about the management stakeholders, it typically includes solution or enterprise architect, project or delivery manager, program managers, test manager, or test director. When it comes to operational stakeholders, we include product owner or product manager, business representatives, or business analyst. Whereas if we talk about the technical stakeholders, they include all the people like team leader, scrum master, web administrator, database developer, administrator, test leader, test automation engineer, a functional or manual tester, or a developer. So pretty much one way we tried covering it, making it to the point that who all can be your 
uh, stakeholders. But when I said this cannot be a comprehensive list because you know your organization better, you know your hierarchy better, and that would <clears throat> make more sense. So it is very important for you to deep dive into your own organization to understand the list of the stakeholders. So figure out that sometime a third party industries also needs to be notified about some of our reports. However, it is confidential, but yet if they are an active contributor to your project, they do become your stakeholders. And finally, to add here, of course, the test reports may vary in context or content or detail depending on the recipient. While technical stakeholders may be more interested in low level details, management will focus on trends such as how many test cases were added since the last test run, changes in the pass fail ratio, and reliability of the TAS and SUT. Operational stakeholders usually put more emphasis on the product use related matrices. So I think we discussed this in the advance itself that your stakeholder will have different interest from the same data of the project. Some people would be interested on the high level. Some people might be interested on the low level. Some might be interested more about how much progress we have made and what are those matrices we need to reflect them. So it might be possible that you may land up creating multiple dashboards for different set of audience. So just understand the need and do the needful. Finally, to add here, of course, we are talking about the last segment of it, where we are talking about how we can create the dashboards and how AI or ML can help us to do that. So when we talk about creating creation of dashboards, modern reporting tools provide several reporting options through dashboard, colorful charts, detailed log collection, and automated test log analysis. There are many available tools in the market to choose from. These tools support data aggregation from sources such as pipeline execution, test logs, project management tools, and code repositories. The visualization of data provided by these tools helps stakeholder see the trends and make decision accordingly. This trend, these trends can include defect clusters, uh, increase or decrease in defect propagation to certain test environment, SUT, performance degradation, and reliability of the builds. In simple one-liner, dashboards are really interesting options to reflect your status of date. Dashboards give you many other options like inclusive of several reports, charts, and graphs. And these charts and graphs would make a lot of difference to any set of stakeholder. So we need to understand how exactly a tool can cater you with the required dashboard. And this dashboard can also be dynamic, not just static. Dynamic here, all I meant by saying dynamic is just that uh, the people will have the feasibility of filtering it or adding more value to the report in order to turn it into a summary graph or turn it into a trend graph to quickly compare some of the critical data and come to the conclusions of making a decision. At the same time, we would not like to ignore at this point of time that how AI and ML can also help us to do that. So <clears throat> when it comes to AI or machine learning uh, of analysis of test logs, in recent years, some test automation tools include or are based on machine learning algorithms. Automated analysis of large amount of data in test logs helps the test automation engineer reduce time spent finding broken locators, analyzing the reasons for the test failures, and yes, is it a defect in the SUT or the task, and growing uh, or and grouping common defects for the test reporting. So exactly, as we are in the world of AI, AI is being introduced into a lot of test tools to perform different activities. In fact, there are many other options which AI is currently capturing us with. AI can help you identify the locators, AI can help you segregate the defects under a particular category, can help you reduce the effort on regression testing, can help you identify the defects based on the patterns. And that is where we are saying, if possible, and your tool supports this feature of AI, you should look forward to implement such things, which can reduce your lot of effort in an analyzing the reported failures, getting into the root cause analysis, and concluding with a summary that reflects that what is the pattern of the failures and how we can improve that. So there are many such things which we can talk about with help of AI and ML. And that pretty much discusses on the last segment of this chapter, that is how exactly a report can be created and published. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank you.